what's going on everybody, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, I hope you are all staying safe and inside in this difficult, turbulent, terrible, turmoil time. Probably did that in the wrong order for decent alliteration, but welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how the transfer market, football, the whole landscape can be changed by what's happening in this global pandemic in the world at the moment. How rules could be temporarily changed and perhaps Chelsea, I know it's perhaps unsavoury to discuss this in a time of, you know, serious tragedy really, but Chelsea could potentially take advantage of what is a very negative situation in terms of the transfer market, I mean. Dominic Fifield and Liam Twomey of The Athletic wrote an excellent article on this and I'll be citing a lot of my information from that. I highly recommend The Athletic and those two Chelsea writers, so shout out to them before I get into the content. In 2004, Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich bought Chelsea and spent lots of money. He broke football as it were you know if you know your Chelsea history or recent history I should say you'll know what happened next Chelsea did a lot of winning they bought a lot of expensive players and later down the line financial fair play came in but it was about 2008 where Manchester City had the Abu Dhabi takeover and obviously they came in flexing massive financial muscle and it was at that point Roman Abramovich knew he could not compete. Sure, he was a billionaire, but it comes to a point where you just cannot compete with a whole oil fueled state. Manchester City suddenly are now just money, just money everywhere. Abramovich being smart saw the situation and come 2011 when the proposal for financial fair play came in, Chelsea abided and were very happy to support that motion. Since then Chelsea have taken great pride in balancing the books, being self-sustainable, even jokes down the road about austerity Chelsea, but you know they generated a lot of revenue if it wasn't just from marketing or general club success and winning, it was through great negotiations of players sales and the loan army loan fees basically generating a lot of that pee and they've been fine ever since Chelsea Football Club you know won Champions Leagues won league titles Europa Leagues FA Cups League Cups everything has been fine this article in the Athletic talks about how the transfer market landscape could be changed if not forever, for a long time coming out the other side of this pandemic, or certainly while it's still going on, because behind the scenes there's still a lot of stuff going on, even right now. Ahead of recruitment of a Premier League club who remains anonymous, informed The Athletic that there will be a lot of bargains out there and you will not see a transfer worth 100 million or more, which is really, really interesting. Now, what quantifies a bargain in this current time? Because let's be honest, football transfer fees went mental. I'm still not sensitized or sensitized or acclimatized to these high, high prices for average players but the general suspicion is the market will be radically changed players will have to be a lot lot cheaper because clubs who have suffered massively due to the lack of football you know basically not making any money will have to sell players for a lot lot cheaper and it will become what will be looked at as a buyer's market. But this is where things get really interesting. Due to the sort of crisis that's going on and how clubs from the very top to the very bottom are all being affected in many ways, you know, smaller clubs are going to the wall or could do, big clubs won't be able to pay massive player wages, which can be like up to 80% of their revenue. I mean, a good sensible club shouldn't have as high as 80, maybe around 60, but you know what I mean millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds going to these players or going everywhere being wasted no revenue being generated loads of uncertainty in the air everyone panicking everyone freaking out oh my god what's gonna happen uefa are sitting down and toying with ideas to relax or indeed even suspend financial fair play for a certain period of time to allow clubs to put money into their companies, institutions, and rebuild, and you know, basically rebuild football, essentially. So, off the bat, this would really, really benefit clubs like Chelsea Football Club. Of course, this would also benefit the likes of Manchester City, but in terms of an individual club with a lot of money in terms of their owner, if they really have an idea of what they want to do, they just want the ability to spend the money so they can do it, forgetting about their close rivals who also have a lot of money, 
they need to worry about themselves and they're like right we could finish this philosophy this idea this plan this vision if only we could spend the money we spent it's not the same as city it's not the same as united we want to do this we just need these players but we need to spend the money if financial fair play is temporarily suspended, this gives Roman Abramovich the chance to do so. Remember, on top of that, Chelsea did have money to spend anyway, and they were planning on doing a massive rebuild. Sure, because of everything that's happened, they might have to rethink, reshuffle their ideas, their plans, because regardless to rule changes, it's going to be difficult and it's a whole new... We're in uncharted territory here, essentially. But if you don't have to worry about FFP for a certain amount of time, remember, at this point, this is just a theoretical discussion up in the air. I'm not reporting a definite change in financial fair play. Let's get that out of the way. But if the reins are off, it makes a lot of stuff easier. Frank Lampard is still working tirelessly behind the scenes, trying to get stuff done. Remember, I've explained to you guys before, he does have a lot of power when it comes to transfers and is constantly communicating with Marina Granovskaya and the gang at Chelsea. Everyone's working really hard. There's a lot of Zoom meetings going on between agents, players and clubs. And Chelsea, who are rumoured to want up to seven players this summer, even if they don't get seven players, you can imagine they'll probably try and get three, four, who knows, maybe even five done this summer transfer window, which seems so far away now if you think about what's going on. It's only really Hakim Ziyech at the moment that seems anywhere close to done. But let's be real, Hakim Ziyech is done. Uncertain and turbulent times for football in general. Who's gonna come out on top? It's just absolutely mental. If Chelsea do get the chance to spend money and certain regulations are relaxed, I believe they will put a lot of money into Chelsea again. They'll see an opportunity. If you look at the likes of, say, Manchester City, who may put a lot of money in as well, but still, as things stand, they might not even be in the Champions League next season, so they might not be able to attract certain players to their clubs, etc. Chelsea are in the Champions League, they have the ability to spend, they're a very exciting new project that are on the up, they could be in a very strong position in comparison to their peers in the Premier League going into next season's campaign, if and when it eventually does start. Chelsea Football Club, Marina Granovskaya and seemingly Roman Abramovich are very, very committed to a new squad rebuild at Chelsea Football Club under new coach Frank Lampard. And I know, you know, and if you watch my videos, you'll definitely know Chelsea need a bunch of players and intend on buying a load of quality. It's been a while since they've signed a player. <laughs> too long and they'll be looking to bring in of course a left back a striker possibly a center back i'm going to do a video soon on center backs and talk about potential people or indeed if chelsea could be okay with the center backs they've got just perhaps nurturing a new partnership oh interesting another thing that's super interesting is if there's going to be no 100 million pound transfer plus what's going to happen with the likes of Jade and sancho is he still just going to go to manchester united but for a cheaper price like say 90 million pounds who knows people are still speculating chelsea is still in for him but as things stand manchester united are indeed the heavy favorites or remain the heavy favorites to sign him but does that give chelsea inclination to sign another high tier winger who knows obviously stop by football therapy every single day and i will keep you guys updated on all these news stories regarding transfers and general football media behind the scenes if you've enjoyed the content today guys i'd urge you guys to like the video that helps me out a lot and i do want to take a second to thank you if you subscribe to football therapy but also to notify the majority of you that uh, the majority of you that watch the video aren't subscribed right you probably hear YouTubers say this all the time because it's true. I think 60% of my viewers aren't subscribed to Football Therapy. Now, if you're a recurring viewer and you keep coming back, why not just subscribe? It's so easy, it takes a second. You hit that bell notifications icon and you're subbed, you're locked in. Daily Chelsea Football Club content for you. Also, I wanna urge you all to come follow me on the Instagram. <laughs> I do daily Instagram lives uh, from my apartment chilling out here because we're all bored in this isolation lockdown period and I like being interactive with everyone who enjoys football therapy. So be sure to come and follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick and we'll hang out, talk about football, Chelsea Football Club and whatever we fancy. So come say hello. Uh, that's it guys. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Um, enjoy the football that is not happening at the moment and I will see you later. Wait.
it so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be 